Genesis chapter 12, God speaks. God is no longer speaking uh, in judgment. He's speaking in blessing. Of course, He spoke in blessing to, to Noah. Now He speaks in blessing to Abram. And we're really going to start bearing down on the spiritual lessons now, okay? The lessons which apply to us. The, Genesis 12, verse 1. The Lord said to Abram, Okay, let's wait a minute. Who was Abram? Well, we know he's the son of Terah. We know he lives in Ur of the Chaldees. Hold your place in Genesis 12 and turn to Joshua. Joshua 24. Holding our place in Genesis 12.1, we turn to Joshua chapter 24. Verse 2. Joshua 24, 2. Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, From ancient times your fathers lived beyond the river, namely Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. So, the family of Abraham was a religious family. They were worshipers, but they weren't worshiping the true God. They weren't worshiping the God of Israel, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. They were worshiping false gods, according to Joshua 24. We see the same kind of thing in Acts chapter 7. This is the, this is the sermon that C, Stephen preaches before he's killed. Acts 7, verse 2. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran, and said, Depart from your country and your relatives and come into the land that I will show you. Now. Abraham, Abram was an idolater in the land of the Chaldeans. And in that context of, idol, of idolatry and false worship, the Lord appears to him and the Lord speaks. Let's ask another question before we go on. Was it an audible voice? Or did he speak to him spiritually and lead him? I think it was an audible voice. There are times in the Old Testament when God, and the New Testament when God speaks with an audible voice. The prophets tell us that God's voice sounded like the sound of many waters. What does that mean? Well, it could mean that the voice of God sounded like the voice of a, of a, of a talking waterfall. When Samuel is asleep at the tabernacle in the home of the priest Eli, God speaks to him. We know that that was an audible voice because he thought it was the voice of Eli. And he got up and said, did you call me? And I said, no, I didn't call you. It was the voice of God. Now, does God lead Abram or Abraham every time only by an audible voice? I would say no. Uh, does God ever lead us with an audible voice? Well, He could if He wanted to. I've never met a Christian who convinced me that God was calling him with a, an audible voice. I think there are Christians who believe that. Maybe He is, maybe he, he isn't. The fact is, He does lead us today whether He calls with an audible voice or not. The fact is, He did lead Abram and He did call him, I think, with an audible voice. He says, Go forth from your country and from your relatives, from your father's house, to the land which I will show you. Now, I have, I have liked to travel in my life. I've traveled quite a lot. I've been to, 50, I think, about 50 countries. There's a lot of places I haven't been that I'd like to go. I've never been to the Southern Hemisphere. I've never been to Sub-Saharan Africa. I've never been to Australia. I've never been to South America. 
My daughter is moving to South America in September. So I imagine that I will, God willing, one day visit South America if I visit her in Brazil. Even though I have loved to travel and I've considered it a great blessing, I'm tired of traveling. And I don't really want to travel anymore. If I live five months, I'll be 60 years old. Let me just say that I travel in relative comfort. Nobody traveled in relative comfort in Abram's generation. If you traveled, it was torture and it was dangerous and it was inconvenient. And Abram was 15 years older than I am when God told him to leave the place of comfort and to go where? He didn't tell him. He just said, I'll show you. Now let's talk a minute about the will of God and let's make a spiritual application here. Um, God only needs to lead us one step at a time. We don't need to know what the final step will be before we take the first step. We trust God with the final step and we obey God with the first step. One thing is sure, we will never take the final step until we take the first step. And sometimes all God tells us is the first step. Um, if we say, well, where is this leading? You don't need to know that. The only thing we need to know is it's leading, leading us into obedience. And obedience is always the right direction. Now, this is a rich man. This is a comfortable man. This is a man who lives in a place where he has everything that he would need in the ancient world. And this is a man who's called to leave it all. Why? Because it's God's will. Faith is when we trust God for the things that we do not see. But the first thing that was asked of this man was a big, big thing. He was told by God in chapter 12, verse 1, that God would show him the place where he was taking him. But then he's given a, a different kind of promise in chapter 12, verse 2. We call this, by the way, the beginning of the Abrahamic covenant. We've seen the Noahic covenant, the covenant with Noah, which had to do with a rainbow, which had to do with a promise that God would never again destroy the earth through water. Now we see the Abrahamic covenant. God says, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. We have seen God curse the earth. We have seen God curse Cain. Uh, curse Cain. We have seen Noah curse Canaan, the son of Ham. What is a blessing? A blessing is the opposite of a curse. What does a curse mean? It means you have something to regret. You have something to be sad about. It may not happen today, it may not happen tomorrow, but one day it'll happen and you need to regret it. What does a blessing mean? A blessing means you have something to celebrate. You have something to be glad about. Maybe it doesn't even make you happy that day, but it ought to make you happy that this wonderful thing that's gonna, is gonna happen, this blessing of God. One of the things that distinguishes Christians is that they find blessing in the middle of heartbreak. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. Last summer, I had to go to America to preach for five weeks. During that five weeks, I was invited to take part in five funerals, five friends who died. I only had time for four of the funerals because if I had done the fifth funeral, I would not have been able to be with my mother on her birthday. But I went to see the husband of the man whose wife died the day before the funeral and then I, I left to go to Atlanta to be with my mom 
on her birthday. Now, I was with the family of five friends who died. All those families were hurting. All those families were in great pain. Two of those people were very young, very young indeed. And the wives of those young men were in great pain. But in all five cases, the dead and their families were believers. And in all five cases, they were praising God and they were thanking God. One of the women who'd lost her husband suddenly was saying it was such a blessing that my grandson was here when he died. It's such a blessing that my neighbor was able to call the ambulance. It's such a blessing that we were able to do this the day before we died. Now see, her heart is broken. She's crushed. She's shattered. She's lost her husband. She's in pain. What is she doing? She's talking about the blessing of God. That's what a Christian does. Because the pain on this earth is immediate and it doesn't last. The blessing of God is ultimate and permanent and it never ends. So what, just as God warned about a death to Adam, just as God warned about a flood to Noah, God promises a blessing to Abram. Adam really didn't know what a death was. Noah really didn't know what a flood was. Abram doesn't really know what a blessing is. But he's about to find out. And so are we.